Right, hi guys, and welcome back to the Lolo Masterfast My Team Career Mode, or whatever you want to call it. And this time it's going to be the Red Bull Ring. So we're going to see how we're going to get round this relatively short circuit in our not so bad Lola. We're catching up to uh, Haas there, as you can see, quite a way ahead of Williams. We're just going to sort out some of the uh, development parts that have failed and use the rest of the resource points up to uh, full effect or as much as possible at least and uh, see what else we've got available. So we're going to have a look and see if we can develop anything there. We can, but um, if we can develop some durability, that might be best. Have we got anything free? Unfortunately, insufficient resource points are there. But I think we might have something there. We can do that. Are we going to do that? Are we going to do it? Yes, of course we are. Durability is the key. As always, like I keep saying, and like I'll always keep saying, first you make a car reliable, and then you make it quick. But we've got quite a lot of money in the bank, so we're probably going to be spending some of that as well. As you can see, the engine is quite worn, but I'm going to leave it as it is for now. I know the engine is bad, um, but we want to keep the components on that we've got just for now. And then once the more durability parts come into play, then we can put the new engine bits on, because they'll last a bit longer. So that's the plan anyway. Um... Whether it lasts that long and however it works out is unsure at this moment in time, but we'll see how we get on. And uh, yeah, we're just going to have a look now. We've got, as you can see, plenty of money in the bank, so it's time to spend some money in the uh, resources in the uh, big powertrain areas and see if we could develop some more, uh, get more progress done here and see what we're going to spend it on. Uh, upgrading parts, quality controls. Uh, it, it's mainly quality control we're after. Uh, if we're honest, because obviously then it's less failures further down the line when we do spend the resource points, we haven't got to spend more, so that's what we're doing there, and uh, yeah, going to be quite a lot of changes guys at the uh, end of this episode as well, so make sure you stay till the end, um, that was briefly Karen there, uh, the lawsuit's still going on uh, for the fact that she had to work on Monday, she wasn't very happy. Uh, but yeah, we're gonna we're spending it now. We're midway through the season. This is round 11 of 22. So I thought it's time to make some upgrades in some serious departments now, and get that money spent. So uh, yeah, we're gonna just spend it in where we're we spending it here. There we go. We're gonna go for the some aerodynamics and uh, see where that leads us. As you can see, we're already doing quite well in the durability sector. And uh, yeah, now it's time for qualifying. As you can see, we've just jumped in and it looks like it's instantly going to rain. So it's an 18 minute session. We need to get out there and we need to get out there now is uh, what I think. Because if it pisses it down and it, we're on inters, then we're not going to be as quick as what we are on softs. And here we are coming round the final uh, couple of corners here at Red Bull Ring. We're on our only flying lap. And as you can see, the rain is pouring down now. The circuit is only going to be getting slower. And we pop it in P4 behind Grosjean, can be at, but ahead of Sainz and our teammate Ragianathan. Uh, I'm not quite sure who's on pole at the moment. And there we go, it's Max Verstappen. And he's the only one of the big teams that didn't get caught out. Look at that, Ragianathan qualifies 7th. We've got the Williams there of Latifi and Russell in 6th and 8th. We've got obviously Grosjean, he stayed 3rd. We've got Kvyat 2nd. And there we go, look, the lead... Mercedes 11th and 12th they got it wrong and they are all on into so we've got the two Ferraris down there the two Mercedes a Red Bull both Renaults absolutely mental absolutely mental so we're going to look forward to this race now and I'm going to hand you over to the incapable hands of Mr David Croft this is it then race day in Spielberg for this year's Austrian Grand Prix the grandstands were a sea of red in 2019, thanks to the commemorative hats in honour of the late great Nicky Lauda, who took home victory, of course, back in 1984. And it's a sellout crowd once again here today. The Spielberg circuit then is situated 700 metres above sea level, with just 10 corners making up one of the shortest laps of the season. One time around here is a distance of 2.6 miles, with the best overtaking chances into turn one or the tight uphill turn three. Now, Anthony Davidson, I wonder, might we be in for some early pit stops today for the midfield teams, all trying to put some pressure on or disrupting things for the leaders up front? If you're in the middle of the pack, you know, you've got your own race to run, I don't think they're going to be thinking about causing trouble up front. However, closer to the head of the pack, don't be surprised to see some split strategies. If you're running second and third, for example, bringing one car in for an undercut while leaving the other one out there longer can put a lot of pressure on the leader and maybe force them into an error. 
Before we begin, let's take a quick look at the grid lineup for today's race. Young superstar Max Verstappen starts from pole position, and Daniel Kvyat lines up alongside. As we continue through the rest of the grid today, we have Grosjean, the scientist, Carlos Sainz, and Russell, Ragunathan, Latifi, Perez, and Pierre Gasly, Bottas, Hamilton, Charles Leclerc, and Albon, Ricardo, Vettel, Kimi Raikkonen, and Lando Norris, Stroll, Giovinazzi, Magnussen, and Esteban Ocon rounds off the grid. It's almost time for those five red lights to go out. Then let's see who can prevail today. So as you can see, an incredibly topsy-turvy grid, and we're waiting for the five lights to go out now. We've got Grosjean ahead, Kvyat ahead as well, and it's a long hold, and finally, away we go, and, oh, well, I'm not quite sure what happened to Grosjean there. Initially a good start, but then bogged down on the second pull away, and we're up the inside of Kvyat, are we? Yes, we are, yeah, well, we're alongside at the moment, and finally through into second place at Turn 1, so we've gained two places after starting P4 on the grid. This is unbelievable. These last two races have been absolutely crazy. And we're still on the inside now of Kvyat as he gets a bit of a better run on the exit of Turn 1. We've got briefly yellow flags there, not sure what was kicking off, and we're still attacking Danny Kvyat, who we didn't get quite ahead of, and we're in rich mix. We just de deployed some of the overtake there, but don't want to use it all up at the first part of the lap. He fences off well, so we're not doing too bad at the moment, but overtake rich mix. We're going up the inside here now, are we? This is going to be tight. This is going to be very tight, but thankfully, first lap, Kvyat gives us room, and we're through into P2. <laughs> and Verstappen's got it easy this race, hasn't he? So long as it doesn't break down, he's won. He's got a lot of slower cars behind us, uh, including ourselves, of course. He can just pull away, maintain a gap, and then enjoy himself because there's not going to be a lot happening for him it's going to be a boring win if all goes to plan so we exit lap one and end lap one with Max Verstappen unsurprisingly setting the fastest lap and we're already well nearly three seconds behind him so yeah I think the win's going to be a stretch but here we are P2 for now we've got to keep his eyes on of course the cars from behind uh, all the ones that started on the intermediate tyres, of course, in the qualifying session, they're going to be trying to make their way through and get a best result as possible as they can. Max Verstappen, of course, in the championship hunt with the likes of Hamilton, Leclerc and Bottas. So him being out in the lead is really going to benefit him. As for us, we're just racing his own race. We're on for a podium at the moment in these really early stages of the race and we're going to try and maintain that as best we can. Well, if we've got the likes of Kvyat, Grosjean behind us, it's going to help us because they're slower and on the same paces us mostly so uh, we just need to be careful just watch ourselves keep it clean keep it tidy and all being well the race will just come to us and we'll be able to get a fantastic result if it's in the points i'll be happy but at this moment in time we're in p2 we're going to keep aiming for that podium while ever we can but i am aware the faster cars are eventually going to come through the pack and uh, no doubt chomp at our reels and then eventually get through but for now we are in p2 at the end of lap two Jumping all the way forward to lap 9 now, all we did was maintain P2, we've had no contact from behind, no attack from behind at all, and we are coming up to our pit stop window, uh, Verstappen well out in the lead, 5 seconds as we said, he gained the gap and then just maintained it at that and he's really not been pulling away much, but George Russell is out of the race and safety car is deployed and that is going to work absolute wonders for ourselves because we are going to pit this lap anyway, so I'm sure everyone else will be diving into the pits as normal. Uh, but it is time for us to pit as we had to slow down there to make the delta and then we lose a huge heap of time to the cars behind. So that isn't that isn't great for us. But nonetheless, we come into the pits now and here we go. In. We've had no front wing damage this time. I double checked. It's not going to be another Canada where I didn't need to change the wing and I changed it anyway. So it's just going to be a nice clean pit stop. There you go. Verstappen's already out of the pits just as we come in. But thankfully, it's a safety car period, so we are going to catch that gap back up. As you can see there, the engine was really yellow. And uh, yeah, the ICE, the ICE, the internal combustion engine, is not loving life at the moment. It's done quite a lot of rounds. And uh, yeah, we're going to be needing to replace that soon. But while we're behind a safety car, just running at a reduced pace, that's going to help the engine life out dramatically. In lean mix, of course, as well, so we're not pushing it to its limits. And for the rest of the race, I am just going to keep it in standard or lean, unless we're under serious attack for some points at the end. Uh, that's going to be the only time I'm going to put it into rich. But for now, we're keeping it as it is. We're out in P2. Everyone else dives into the pits as well. And uh, yeah, we're not doing too bad as the safety car comes into end. I thought Max was going then, but he didn't. He backed off. We're not going to get him, we know we're not, but we're going to keep as close as we can to him. 
and there you go green lights and away we go and yep there we go we've got the overtake button enabled resume racing we're just in standard mix as you can see there out of the lean mix and uh, we're just going to keep it at that for now unless we come under massive pressure and attack Leclerc got up to P5 in all of that sh uh, melee with the pit stops so he's going to be a threat and as we said the quicker cars are eventually going to come through this race so we've got to be wary of them got to be mindful of them but while we've got Kvyat behind us it's a cushion because of course they've got to overtake him before they get to us so fingers crossed we can maintain this P2 we're on lap 12 now as you can see the safety car out was out for a good couple of laps so that's helped our engine I suppose but we are struggling with the pace it must be said we are um, seemingly down on power and I can tell we're down on power now but nonetheless we're still maintaining P2 for now Kvyat behind, Sainz behind, Leclerc with the fastest lap behind mounting an attack on Carlos Sainz at the moment and he's going to be putting pressure on us soon but hopefully they can keep him at bay for a lot longer than we need him to be and uh, fingers crossed we can maintain a podium and a strong result as, uh, as you can see we run a little bit wide there and Max Verstappen pulls away and sets fast his lap, takes it off Charles Leclerc as we enter lap 13 and lap 14 now and here we go, we've got Kvyat behind us, I had a poor exit out of that corner, there comes Charles Leclerc we're going to go around the outside, we've got a warning for a collision with uh, Kvyat and we're up the inside of Charles, we make slight contact, a bit of wing goes flying off that's not to be unexpected, we've lost a lot of our bits of wing during the course of this season and we're mounting an attack again on Danny Kvyat. Back through on him, hopefully. DRS, of course, wide open. Danny Kvyat closing in. Sparking a lot. Once again, those Alpha Towers. They like running a low downforce setting. And here we go. We're going to go for around the outside. We're not really on the racing line there. We're not really on the racing track at all, to be honest. But we're around the outside. Kvyat gives us racing room as rear wheels just bang together there as we make contact. But we are through. And on lap 15 now, we've, again, we've had a poor exit. And that's Leclerc through this time. I don't think we're going to be able to do anything uh, about him, at, are we? No, unfortunately not. That's it. He's away and gone. So Charles Leclerc has made a brilliant recovery. And he's up into P2 at the moment. Whether he can hunt down uh, Max Verstappen is going to be anyone's guess. But for now, we're starting lap 16 and we're in P3. We're going to try and mount an attack wherever we can on the clerk. He's not pulling away from us at the moment. We're in standard big still, as you can see. We don't want to put it into mid tricks just yet. We know who the cars we're racing around and we're miles ahead of those at the moment. So here we go. Are we going to mount an attack on Charles Leclerc? Well, we've got DRS. We're in standard mix. We're probably going to use a bit of overtake as well while we can. Are we? No, we're not going to. We're just going to fend it off here. And unfortunately, I've got my braking point wrong. And oh, no. No, that's not done us any favours at all. Got my braking point wrong going into the corner there. And unfortunately, had to dart out of the way to avoid a big rear end shunt into the back of Leclerc. And we ended up hitting him side on. And that's done front wing damage. And here comes Carlos Sainz. He's now through on us. Is he? Yes, he is. Oh, that's a disappointment. That, that's a shame. I just got my braking point wrong. I wasn't meant to be trying to overtake Leclerc there. As you can see, I wasn't in the overtake button. I, I just got the DRS, but I was quite happy to sit behind him. But unfortunately, we've damaged the car now. The front wing. The engine, of course, is still failing. Let's not forget that. And unfortunately, we're down into P4. As uh, yeah, Leclerc obviously slipped back through. And Sainz got the better of us as well. As we're now monitoring this front wing damage. Uh, DRS is wide open. We've got Lewis Hamilton behind for company now. So Lewis Hamilton, a much quicker car in the Mercedes. He's going to try and make a move around the outside. We're going to try and defend all we all for all we're worth, of course. It's not worth fighting too hard, but while ever we've got the DRS, while ever we've got the rich mix, while ever we've got the overtake, we're going to just going to try and fend them off for as much as we can. But a Mercedes is so much faster than us, and yeah, we're racing around with Hamilton. It's a brilliant term for our first season. We've already had a podium. It looks like we're on for more solid points, but here he goes. Round the outside. Yeah, we've gone wide there, unfortunately. He switched back straight. We're going to try and go for a move up the inside, and bang! We've made more contact. We drifted it Tokyo Drift style. And unfortunately, yeah, bit of a silly error on my part there. I tried too hard on a position that wasn't really worth it. And that means we've lost out now to Daniel Ricciardo as we had that uh, drift moment. And we're down into P6 with Roman Grosjean behind. So he's doing a fantastic job, is Roman. Of course, he started P3. He's tumbled down the order a little bit, just like we have. Um, but yeah, he's still in the point, so fair play to uh, Roman Grosjean. He's going to be out in an attack on us now as the wing damage has got slightly worse. The tyre life isn't brilliant. And look at the wear on the engine. There's quite a lot of damage parts there. 
And as we're on to the last lap, Max Verstappen has indeed won the race, so congratulations to him. It's a well-deserved effort by him. And, uh, yeah, no doubt Charles Leclerc's second. And uh, I'm not quite sure who third will be, because Hamilton, of course, would, would have been met in an attack on Carlos Sainz. But P6! We're P6, and any other day would have absolutely took that. I'm a tad disappointed with myself about the damage, but nonetheless... A fantastic effort, a fantastic effort once again. Driver of the day to Charles Leclerc, I can't fault that one bit. I think he was down in like 15th, 16th on the grid for starting and got a podium, so well done to him. There's Christian Horner, incredibly happy with Max Verstappen and you would be, wouldn't you? you? You got it right, you got it right. Everyone else made a mistake there and you were the only top team that got his driver on pole uh, during those interchangeable conditions. So well done, all the lads patting each other on the back. As you can see, that's Arava's avatar there. Yeah, that, there he is. The least said about him, the better. And uh, there's Sergio Perez. Happy to get in the points. I'm sure he uh, will be happy with that, yeah. He had an unfortunate race as well. Qualifying, I should say. And here we go. And there's Carlos Sainz. He made it onto the podium for the second consecutive time. Max Verstappen lifts the trophy high. And it's time for the Champagne! No. So there we go, it was Max Verstappen from Charles Leclerc from Carlos Sainz. Lewis Hamilton recovering to fourth, so good effort by him. We're sixth and Grosjean seventh. And look at everyone behind us, all gaining places, of course, because we have the likes of the Williams, our teammate Ragnarathen, and, you know, the Alpha Tauris and stuff there. So we're always going to lose positions. And there we are, look, there are the losers. Ragnarathen finishing of Bottas. So Bottas had to make an additional pit stop, as did Kvyat. I wonder what happened to him. And, of course, George Russell, the only retirement of the race, which is a shame. Big, big shame for Williams to be all the way down there. Something must have gone wrong with Latifi as well, because we managed to hold position, Grosjean and ourselves. And, yeah, Williams qualifying sixth and eighth to come away with no points at all. Really, this was their big opportunity, and they fluffed it. As you can see there, Haas have got ahead of Alfa Romeo. That's how much that seventh place means to them. So they'll be really happy as Renault jump ahead of McLaren in the Constructors' Championship. We're still P9 in the Drivers' Championship as well, which is decent. We're certainly taking that with 52 points. Who'd have thought that for a Season 1, eh? Who'd have thought it? We've got really lucky at times. We've got lucky this weekend with the qualifying. That helped us massively. And, of course, Paul Ricard with that incredible, uh, amazing pit stop problem there. So, we're back into the garage now, and we had a, a, a notification telling us that our driver has expired his contract, Raginathan, and uh, we were looking to see whether we wanted to extend it, or whether we were going to get someone else. Well, it looks like all the F1 drivers are out, we haven't got the budget for them at all, and uh, we're looking now, and do you know what? We are going to go for an additional driver, we're not going to renew Raginathan. His results have been... Relatively poor. We had that silly mistake where he ploughed into the back of uh, a hailing Kimi Raikkonen at Paul Ricard. So unfortunately, it is time for Raginathan to leave the team and depart. And we're going to try and approach and get a contract with Nick De Vries if possible. Uh, we're going to see now if we can if we can get a contract. So we're approaching the driver. Is he interested? Yep. He set his fees. And we're not going to make any kind of offer. We're just going to go for the uh, highest offer. We can afford the £2 million, uh, An extra £120,000 is, is neither here nor there for us. We can afford it. We're going to send the offer. Hopefully, he'll, uh, he'll accept. And yes, there we go. We've got a brand new driver in terms of Nick De Vries for the next races onwards. And just before we advance, of course, to the uh, next race, which will be at Silverstone, our home Grand Prix. For myself and the Lolo Masterfast team. Uh, yeah, we're going to be just filling the activities in now, as you can see. So we're going to need stuff for driver development, uh, helping the team with sponsor activities and stuff. We don't really want any outgoing cash. As you can see, we've only got uh, 116000 left in the bank. That will change, hopefully. Uh, um, I'm sure it will change. Um, in due course once we advance the time a little bit but we just wanted to put some PR events in there to earn them cash as you can see low cash we've got warm components we are going to change those um, as well uh, we've got an invitational event there which we're not going to bother with just yet and I'm pretty sure you guys don't want to see it so here we go we've got a sponsor uh, opportunity here now so we're going to select Pan 10 
Pantem Pro V, the uh, the wonderful uh, Pantem Pro V that do shampoos. And we've got a lot of spots to fill on the sponsor sheets. Uh, we had to renew the contracts with Polar and Zigzag, which is why they've come off the car. And we'll be promptly putting them back on the car as sponsors. We're uh, thankful to have them bring in loads of money. We don't have to do much effort. The Pantem Pro V sponsor is to finish in the top 12 during a race. And I'm pretty sure I'm capable of that most times now. And it's not putting the pressure on a scoring points. But top 12s. We've been doing that most of the season anyway, so I'm quite happy to go for that as a secondary sponsor to earn our bonuses. And uh, yeah, now it's time to swap the uh, R&D. Can we do anything? I don't think we've got enough points, but here we go. We're going to put fresh stuff in. Applying components at this moment in time won't give us any penalties. Um, but we need to put the fresh engines in, the fresh components in. The ones where we've only got two for the season, I'm putting the less warm ones in. Um, just so it eases it. I don't want to take any penalties just yet. Especially around our home Grand Prix. I don't want to be taking any penalties there. So we'll just put the lesser worn of the two. And anything that we can have fresh, we're going to have fresh. And uh, then it might just be a mix and match then towards the end of the season. Maybe taking penalties near the end. And there we go, guys. So that is the heads up of everything. I hope we all enjoyed it. And I'll see you next week for Silverstone. Much love.